Hello everyone and welcome to game 14 of the 1972 World Chess Championship match between Robert James Fisher and Boris Vasiljevic Spassky. Now, uh, as you've seen in game 13, it was a, uh, a game that should not have ended in Boris uh, Spassky losing the game. Uh, but as you see in the quote above the board, uh, something Boris said after the game. Uh, he shook Fisher's hands, he congratulated F Fisher on his victory, Fisher left. Uh, and then Spassky said that, uh, how can one lose... Uh, uh, with the opponent's only rook locked in completely. Uh, something Ligorich mentions in his book. Uh, it's really hard to understand how can you lose such a game, but uh, it did happen. Uh, Fischer is again three points in the lead, and it will be very hard for Spassky to get back into this game. Uh, aside from the games, uh, Fischer is still uh, having a, a pretty big war with uh, the cameras. Even though the camera crew left, uh, Mr. Chester Fox's uh, <laughs> crew uh, was no longer in Iceland, uh, but Mr. Barry Frederick, uh, the person who was negotiating uh, all of the deals for Mr. Chester Fox's company, uh, said that he will lose a lot of money and he was looking for ways to sue Fisher, uh, in, uh, uh, considering uh, the, the law in Iceland. And uh, Fisher's uh, attorney, Mr. Paul Marshall, uh, said that uh, that uh, there's really no way that can happen and that even uh, as he said it, he said that he will... Uh, he will be down uh, a million and two hundred something thousand. Uh, that's how much he c he could make uh, with the television rights. Uh, but he said that even uh, if uh, he somehow could sue Fisher for this, there's no way Fisher would uh, ever give him this money. So there's really no point in doing it. Uh, but he also said that Fisher was not against um, cameras. That Fisher actually wanted cameras, and Fisher wanted this uh, epic match to be recorded. Uh, but as Fisher said, uh, he wanted uh, uh, oh, he wanted the uh, remote cameras to be installed in the walls and uh, in the roofs of. Uh, the playing hall and that they should be co controlled remotely uh, from the outside that there doesn't have to be a cameraman inside the playing hall that uh, this is not uh, uh, some kind of a sports event where you know there are a lot of players moving uh, and uh, uh, the cameraman has to keep uh, moving as well so Fisher said that he in fact wanted everything to be recorded uh, just not the way that they are doing it uh, now uh, also, uh, an interesting fact, uh, Larissa, Boris's wife, uh, also came uh, to Reykjavik uh, and uh, all of the other wives uh, of uh, Spassky II came to Reykjavik as well, uh, but they were staying in the Soviet embassy, they, were not, uh, they will not interfere with the match. So, that being said, uh, let's, uh, let's see what uh, Bobby has in store uh, for Spassky with the white pieces in game 14. So, uh, it seems that uh, in this match, Fischer decided to play uh, not so much of e4, so again, he opens with c4. Uh, we have e6, again, uh, a timid approach by Spassky. Uh, knight to f3, d5, d4, and knight to f6, so the queen's gambit declined this on the board. Uh, knight to c3, bishop to e7, and here uh, we have bishop uh, to f4, instead of bishop to g5. In the two previous games, uh, bishop to g5 was played, but now comes bishop to f4. Uh, here, uh, there was a game in 1969 between Petrosian and Spassky where c5 was played and after uh, d captures on c5, uh, knight to a6, uh, it was a game 8 of the petrosian spassky World Chess Championship match, so obviously uh, Fischer knows of this game, so instead, uh, after this bishop to f4, Spassky decides to go for castles. Uh, we have e3 by Fischer. Uh, and now c5, a very principled idea from Spassky as the bishop is now on f4 instead of on g5. Uh, the bishop is not uh, actively participating in the uh, fight uh, over the central squares. Uh, if the bishop was on g5, uh, he would uh, be attacking the knight, and the knight is uh, controlling one of the central squares. So by being on f4, it's not really uh, doesn't have really have any influence uh, on the center of the board. So c5. Uh, also, b6 was played by Spassky in 1968 in Palma de Mallorca tournament uh, against the Larsen. Uh, but most likely Fisher knows of this game as well. So c5 now. Uh, D captures on c5, we have knight to c6, and now c captures on d5. And okay, e captures on d5, uh, bishop to e2 by Fisher, and bishop captures on c5, recapturing the pawn. Uh, we have castles, and now comes e6. Uh, if you think a d4 would have been uh, a very nice central uh, breakthrough here, it does seem like an interesting idea, but... Uh, uh, Spassky's bishop on c5 is un unguarded, so knight to a4 would uh, put black in a lot of problems here. Uh, you have to do something about the bishop, bishop to b6, and now you can simply capture it. Pawn captures, and now after knight captures here, uh, you just win a pawn. Captures, captures, and white is up a pawn, and black's pawn structure is a, a bit messed up. 
Uh, so after this castles, uh, bishop to e6 uh, by Spassky. Uh, we have rook to c1, Fischer develops the rook, uh, Spassky does the same, rook to c8, and here we have uh, a3 uh, by Fischer. Uh, it would be uh, a bit premature as um, uh, Fischer is uh, uh, kind of x-raying this bishop on c5, but there's no good way to take advantage of it, because now, for example, knight captures on d5, uh, does not win you a pawn uh, with the idea that if captures, then captures, because queen captures. And after queen captures, knight captures here. Uh, rook captures on c5, it does seem like you won a pawn, but, a pawn, but not really. Uh, knight captures on f4. Uh, we have e captures on f4, and now comes knight to d4, and this is the problem. Uh, you've opened up a discovered attack against this rook here, and also you are attacking the unguarded bishop on e2. So this bishop on e2 is really the problem. So here if you capture, then first you capture the bishop with check, king has to move, and only now do you recapture, and now you are up a piece. Uh, on the other hand, after knight to d4, uh, your best bet would be knight captures on d4, but now simply rook captures on c5, and black is now up the exchange and with a much better position. Uh, so instead, Fischer goes a3. And okay, we have h6 by Spassky, now comes bishop to g3, a very important move. Uh, now black will not have that maneuver. Uh, knight here captures bishop and then uh, also attacking the bishop on e2, so now the bishop is very safe here. And now Fischer ha uh, has, uh, Spassky has to react to this uh, uh, bishop being eyed by the rook. So bishop goes back, and now while the bishop is here, it's no longer unguarded on c5. Now Fischer is definitely, uh, Spassky is definitely threatening uh, to uh, push d4. Uh, we have knight to e5. Fischer wants to exchange as many pieces as he can, and then the central breakthrough will not be uh, all that significant. Uh, we have knight to e7 by Spassky. Spassky is looking to uh, attack Fischer's very strong bishop on g3, either via knight to f5, or if uh, Fischer ever decides to move his knight, then also knight e4 will be able to capture on g3. And Fischer does go for this. He, he goes for this knight to a4 wing maneuver, uh, going after Spass Spassky's dark square bishop, and Spassky goes knight to e4. A nice central response to this uh, wing maneuver by Fischer. Uh, rook captures on c8, uh, bishop captures on c8, not allowing queen captures, and then uh, the knight capturing the bishop would mess up black spawn structure. Uh, and now comes bishop to f3, a very nice move by Fischer. Uh, he wants to keep an eye on this d4 square that uh, should remain blockaded. Uh, but although bishop to h4 was also uh, a very nice idea. Uh, but okay, uh, we have knight to f3, and now comes bishop to d7, uh, attacking Fischer's knight on a4. Uh, and here, uh, it seems that the best bet for Fischer is captures on b6. And after queen captures, then only then play knight to e5. And it seems like uh, white is uh, white is doing okay here. But here, instead, Fischer goes bishop to e5. And uh, Spassky takes this opportunity to eliminate the knight. Uh, bishop captures on a4. We have queen captures on a4. And now comes uh, knight to c6. Uh, attacking the bishop on e5 and bishop back to f4. Uh, bishop to d4 uh, doesn't really do anything, simply knight captures, and after knight captures, queen to d6, and the black is perfectly fine. Uh, so Fischer goes bishop to f4, going back with the bishop, queen to f6, uh, a very nice uh, developing move by the queen. Now the queen uh, will be very influential on the king side and also on the queen side. Uh, and here, uh, Fischer could go for something like queen to c2 to defend the pawn here, but then Spassky's idea was g5, and this would be very dangerous for Fischer. Bishop to g3, h4 is coming. A very, very nice attack by uh, by the world champion would occur here. So here, Fischer had a different idea. He thought this would perhaps be too much, so he went for bishop to b5. Uh, but this does not work, and this is why it doesn't work. Here, Spassky grabs a pawn. Queen captures on b2. Uh, Fischer plays bishop captures on c6, and here, Fischer thought that he would simply win back the pawn. Uh, but here's the problem. Spassky plays knight to c3. And now uh, you can't wait for Spassky to capture the, uh, the bishop, so you would recapture here. Uh, you would have to you have to figure out what to do with the queen, and there really uh, isn't a good square. Uh, you could uh, think about doing something like bishop to e5, and then after captures you can capture here, uh, b captures on c6, and then simply move the bishop. But still, black would have a much better endgame with uh, with uh, such a such a huge pawn majority here on the queen side. Uh, so, after knight to c3, attacking Fischer's queen, queen to b4 was played by Fischer. Uh, we have queen captures on b4, a captures on b4, and now uh, b captures on c6. There's really no point in playing something like knight e2 check uh, to mess up uh, white pawn structure on the king side after king to h1. Uh, you'd much rather fix your pawn structure here on the queen side because 
uh, well, white will capture on b7. So this is definitely better. B captures on c6. Uh, we have bishop to e5. Uh, and then now comes knight to b5 by Spassky. Uh, getting the knight out of the way. Uh, rook to c1 by Fisher, And here, uh, a, a most valuable tempo for black would be f6. Getting this bishop out of the way and only then deciding wh where to develop the rook. Uh, but here, uh, Spassky went for the immediate rook to c8. Uh, and Fisher went knight to d4. Fisher is hoping to get some... Uh, endgame where he can hold this position uh, a pawn down, uh, but it is in fact in this position that uh, Spassky makes a terrible blunder. Uh, like we've said in the previous position, f6 would have been excellent. Uh, here, it's not all all that much. Here, knight captures on d4 would would have been best. Bishop captures and then f6, and the game continues. Uh, Spassky can leave at least one ma uh, minor piece on the board to keep uh, chances for pushing something more than a draw, uh, because if bishop captures, Spassky would improve his pawn structure and would enjoy a much better position. Uh, but here, after Fisher's knight to d4, Sp Spassky actually plays f6. And f6 simply doesn't work, uh, because if you take into consideration Fisher's previous move, knight to d4, and you take into consideration that this rook is extraing the undefended rook on c8, you can see that f6 is a pretty big blunder, and that simply gives back the pawn. So it seems uh, both players uh, are already pretty tired. It's uh, game 14, Fisher first blunders that pawn. He overlooks uh, Spassky's knight to c3 move attacking Fisher's queen. Uh, and now uh, Spassky blunders this f6 move. Fisher simply captures it. Bishop captures on f6. And there's no point in recapturing. If g captures, knight captures on b5. The rook is unguarded and you, you cannot recapture back. So <laughs> white would be, uh, well... Maybe not better, but uh, all of black's advantage is gone. Uh, so Spassky tried a different idea. He played bishop captures on d4, and now comes the bishop captures on d4. Uh, the result is pretty much the same. Uh, knight captures, pawn captures. It's uh, five pawns each, three pawns island, th three pawn islands each, and uh, there's no way to push for anything here uh, for the world champion Boris Spassky. It's uh, very strange how this uh, whole uh, <laughs> chess chess thing works. Uh, rook to b8, attacking the pawn, and now king to f1. Even here, Fisher makes the absolute best move, because now if you start capturing pawns, uh, then a5 is very dangerous. Uh, you can't capture, of course, because you're getting checkmated here. Uh, so after uh, a5, you would have to move the rook or something. Uh, for example, f3, or make the, make room for the king, and then after pawn captures, you would already uh, have a rook behind a passed pawn, and yeah, it would still be manageable, but you know you don't want to give your opponent any chances. So after rook to b8, king to f1, uh, we have rook captures on b4, rook captures on c6, uh, rook captures on d4, now rook to a6, going after the a7 pawn, there's no way to guard it. Uh, king f7, rook captures, and now after king f6, rook d7 was played, uh, putting a rook behind a pass pawn. Uh, h5, we have king e2. Uh, g5, king to e3, attacking the rook. Rook e4, check. King moves. Uh, king attacks rook. Rook g7. King to f6, rook d7. King e6, and it was in this position uh, on move 40. With, the, with this move, king to e6. Uh, Spassky also reached time control that the players agreed to a draw. So it's really, really a wonderful game. Most likely, not many of you have seen it, uh, but really, uh, such such two amazing moments in the game uh, here after this. After Fisher went for this bishop to b5 idea, where he didn't want to guard this uh, pawn, but uh, it, it was a correct decision. You don't want to allow this attack. So first, uh, Fisher's blunder. <laughs> With this knight to c3 move, he didn't see it, he lost the pawn. Uh, but then very soon after this, a couple of moves, then comes this f6 move by Spassky. An uh, unbelievable move that, uh, very hard uh, very hard to believe that uh, an, an 1800 player would, would make such a move. Because everyone can see that after knight to d4, the threat is knight captures, and that the rook on c8 is unguarded. So this is very, very hard to believe. Uh, but yeah, it seems that uh, all this... Um, uh, psychological warfare uh, of the board uh, took uh, took a really huge toll on Spassky. Uh, but uh, on Fisher as well, uh, Fisher also made a very uh, some very unbelievable mistakes, especially if you consider game one. 
Uh, but yeah, uh, that's game 14 of the 1972 World Chess Championship match between Robert James Fisher and Boris Vasilyevich Spassky. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Revis James, uh, Sean Stablevsky, uh, Mark Karavolos, uh, Anna Levenich, and uh, and B. Mitchell for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, uh, and I'll see you soon, uh, hopefully, with some more interesting content, and uh, game 15 of the match is definitely coming up. Thank you all, and I'll see you soon.